All right. I believe in us. <laughs> I don't know why I believe in us. All evidence to the contrary. <laughs> All evidence to the contrary. And still here we are. Coming to you almost live from the brewing floor at Liability Brewing on Stone Avenue in downtown Greenville, South Carolina. I'm Russ Heaps and welcome to this episode of Big John and Five. That's where I get my good buddy Big John Richards and we come up with a beer, we sniff it, we sip it, we get bits about it. John tells us a little bit about the brewery, uh, sometimes we get a little brewing history and, uh, and we drink some beer which is probably the best part in my opinion. Not so much for you at home. Unless you, you get a beer? Unless you get a beer, go grab a beer. But, we'll uh, wait. Yeah. We'll, we'll be here. We'll be here. John? Lots to talk about here today, Russ, actually. We're at Liability, which I'm very excited for, doing a couple of their beers and you meeting know, with the brewing, brewing team and whatnot. And let me just mention, there's a lot of racket in here because it is the brewing floor. <laughs> yeah, we are, we're so, here. Yeah, so we're here. Go ahead, John. Sorry. That's all right. So uh, we decided to get their barrel-aged wee heavy for, for this shot. Um, and just because it sounds like fun. And, and it smells like fun too. It's at least got a whiff of it on the way up to the camera today. So I'm excited for that. It's a neat little beer. It's a wheat heavy, which is a kind of a designation of a scotch ale. You're pretty good getting those levels right. You know, Boy, they did. Professional I, bartenders. I thought I was going to have to get to complain about that. <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> So uh, we have these kind of a designation of Scotch Ale uh, or Scottish Ale, which doesn't have anything to do with Scotch whiskey. It's just a beer that originated in Scotland. The fun part about that is that um, historically, this, the English were taxing hops as the way to tax beer. So the more hops you put in your beer, the more you got taxed on it. Well, the Scottish didn't want to pay any tax. <laughs> and who could blame them? <laughs> So they started gathering field greens, like in this case, uh, heather tips. There's heather tips in this beer. They would, there's things like bog myrtle and um, uh, there's uh, dozens of others that I'm not gonna stop and try and think of here on camera. But the fact that they brewed this with heather tips makes me very happy. And it's probably almost um, supplanted the hops addition to do something like other tips in a beer like this. Then they aged it in Davidson Reserve whiskey barrels. How much you know about Davidson Reserve? Not much. Well, I went and looked it up. Uh, see, that's why we have John. <laughs> um, I, I didn't take the time to get really deep into their history, but they, the Davidson Reserve, they claim to be the first four year aged locally distilled Tennessee whiskey since Prohibition. Really? Yep, that's what they claim. Uh, and they, so they've got a bunch of awards that they list for their five whiskeys that they brew, but this particular Davidson Reserve has a bunch. And um, it, it should be doing some really wonderful things. It's a sour mash, high rye whiskey, so I'm expecting to pull some of the spice the big molasses, big spicy uh, barrel notes too, coming out of this thing that should really balance out the sweetness of this because we're ten and a half percent here, which is why we poured six in this pour. Six ounce. <laughs> six ounce. I think you may have gone a. I think you may have been a little generous. With we we may have gotten a little carried away because we are celebrities. Oh, yeah, wait, yeah. We're beloved. Yeah, we are beloved. <laughs> Let's, let's taste this thing. I'm with you. I'm very excited because the, the aroma was neat. Dex Maswelli. Cheers. And to you. There's a, there's a big plummy figgy kind of fruit yeah, thing there is. I think it's plums and maybe, not, maybe it's not figs, maybe it's raisins. I'm getting a little brown sugar and, um, too. Yeah, t I was going to say some of the, as I sit with it, some more of the grain and the brown sugar is coming yeah. out. Some of that molasses kind of thing, like I was seeing. Oh, that's delightful. Oh, and that's complex too. It is, and it's a little dry on the finish. Yeah, that wood, the wood is really coming through on the finish and the spice. Oh, for that to be 10 and a half, that's bonkers. That's really fun. And there's so many of these beers. 
that go into a whiskey barrel and get overpowered and come out tasting boozy and harsh and ridiculous. And to get something like this to balance down, first you want a big beer. When you put a 5% beer in a whiskey barrel for three days, it's going to taste like whiskey. Something like this can help hold its own a little more against yeah. the whiskey in the barrel. So I think they brewed the right beer for what they did and somebody pulled this out just at the right time because this is a this is a really well put together beer. Our bartender was um, extolling its is that the right word I want? It's virtues. It's virtues, yes. That's that's where I was trying to get to. Thank you, Russ. Russ is the professional beer. <laughs> I are a writer. Um, but I'm I'm glad to see this happening in Greenville. One of the things that I've been steadfast about is that some of our breweries are a little too pedestrian. They don't they don't like to try things because they're scared people will buy them. Our scene is still pretty young here. Our our I mean up ten years ago we had four breweries in this town. Twelve years ago we had two. So you know we just and now we've got I don't know. 20. 20, yeah. Um, and, and that's not, that's Greenville, I think, and no, not counting Spartanburg and Anderson. Um, but it's growing right up in our, our client, our clientele, our um, our folks, our peeps. Our, our, our uh, audience. Our audience. You guys are getting much better at this game. You don't depend on me. Like some years ago in this town, I mean, people would be like, I have no idea what to choose, Big John. You choose for me. And very few people really, and I, I won't do it for most people. I will make them choose now. But it was more of a game back in the day. Right. Um, and I think people are a little bit more um, lazy when they do that today versus actually coming up and going, you know exactly what I like. And so you're going to pick my beer out for me. I think people just walk up and go, I don't know what I want. And I'm not a fan of that. So all of that's coming back to me saying, I really like that our breweries are really getting into doing some more experimental and off the wall and small batch things that really help push the envelope. I mean, I, I don't care how good you're, unless you're scared about a pale ale, no one's coming to your brewery for your pale ale. Right. You know, they're, they're coming for something like this and then they'll get a pale ale because it's still delicious. So that's that's my rant for this beer, Russ. What else you got for me? <laughs> I feel like I've used up all my time. I'm I'm speechless, John. I'm <laughs> speechless. <laughs> so, uh, how long have these guys been here? Uh, five years, going on five. They're about to have their five-year anniversary. Oh, that's and right. That's we were. Uh, we were, we're hopefully going to get to talk some about that with the Bruin team here in a, yep. in, a, in a few minutes. So we're biding our time. We're trying some of their beers and then waiting to get the scoop from the source. From the big guy. Yeah. So anything else? No. Come to Greenville. It's fun. It is. It is. <laughs> All right. Here's to it. So damn lucky. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs>